Everybody, how are we doing this morning? Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning at Good Shepherd Community Church. Whether you're here with us right now in person or online, we're so glad that you're here. We're going to stand up this morning and start our day by declaring the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. Amen. Oh, come on. Can we celebrate a little bit this morning? Come on. We don't have to wait until we get a few songs in. Let's give God praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, God, and we commit today, Lord, to continue to sing to you and raise a hallelujah, Lord. We will raise our voices, Lord, and declare that you are good. God, we love you. We worship you, God, and we commit this day to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together this morning and get ready to sing to our God and our King. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah, louder than the unbelief, I raise a
Continue to lift up your name. Continue to worship you in this place. Thank you, God. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Come on, let's lift up his name, sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you.
so worthy and so holy, God. We remind our souls of that today, God. We praise you, Jesus. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be
surround us, surround us. You were here. In Genesis 28, we see the story of a man named Jacob who was running away. He was running away from some situations in his life, some circumstances, some issues that, that, that were caused by some of the things that he had done. And he knew of the God of his father. He knew of the God of his grandfather. He knew of the God of Abraham. He knew of the God of Isaac. But he had not yet had that personal encounter with the presence of God. And it says that he was dreaming and the Lord appeared to him in a dream and began to speak some things, began to speak some promise, began to speak some hope into a hopeless situation, began to speak some life into him. And it says that he woke up from that dream and this is what he said. He said, surely the presence of the Lord is here and I wasn't even aware of it. He said, surely the presence of God was right here and I wasn't even aware of it. I want you to know the presence of God is right here, right now. I believe the Lord wants to speak some things to you this morning. I believe the Lord wants to speak some things to me this morning. If we will listen, if we will take time to listen to the Holy Spirit, to listen to the voice of God, to let him speak into our lives, I believe the presence of of the living God is right here, right now, this morning. Let's not move forward from this moment and not recognize, not realize that he is here. Let's not leave this moment and say, surely the presence of God was there at church this morning and I didn't even know it. Let's say, no, Lord, we know that you are here, Lord. We receive from you this day, oh God, whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that you want to speak to us, oh God, we are here for you and for you alone, oh God. Lord, I pray that your spirit would continue to rest in this place, oh God, that we would hold on to the hope that we have in you, the life that we have in you, oh God, that we would cling to you, cling to your presence, oh God. As we sing one more time, Lord, that not for a moment, Lord, you have forsaken us, but you are in this place. You are in this church. You are in our homes. You are in our businesses. You are all around us, oh God. We receive you. We run to you, oh God. We run to your presence, oh God. As we sing one more time, that not for a moment, where we forsake you. Yes, Lord, come on, let's give him praise. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, I ask as we move forward with this service, oh God, whether it's in our homes, Lord, right here in this place, if we're listening in our cars, wherever we're at, Lord God, Lord, we need your presence. We need your presence. So, Lord, would you, would you meet with us today? Lord, as we receive a word, as we continue to worship, as we go about our day, Lord, would your presence go before us, behind us, all around us, Lord, and will we be encouraged by your presence this day and every day of our lives? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, good morning, happy Sunday. What a great day we're having. God is here, 
And there's so much more that he wants to do on this day in us, with us, and through us. So welcome to Good Shepherd Community Church. If you're here with us online, thank you so much for joining us. If you're here in person, again, we're so glad that you're here. And as we move forward with the service, before we get to everything else that God has for us this morning, I just would like to ask for you to be seated. Amen? Amen. Thank you. GSCC Next Gen is open in person with a completely redesigned Sunday service experience. We have classes in the pond for children from birth through pre-K, kids church in the activity center for kids in kindergarten through fifth grade, and youth service in the cafe for students in sixth through 12th grades. If you have any questions about our safety protocols or what to expect, you can call us at the church office or email nextgen at gsccconnect.com. If you don't feel comfortable returning to in-person services just yet, all of our next-gen services will still be available online every week so that your family can also participate from home. We are looking forward to seeing you soon. Parents, if the number on your child's pickup tag appears on the black box above the screen, please make your way to the children's area. Giving statements for the 2020 fiscal year can be found on your CCB profile and downloaded at your convenience. To log into your CCB profile, simply visit gsccconnect.com and click the CCB login located on the utmost section of the homepage. From here, you will be redirected to CCB to log in or set up your login if you don't already have one. Giving statements will only be mailed out upon request. We wanna take this time to go over the different ways that you can give. For quick and simple giving, you can text the word GSEC to 77977 or give online at gseconnect.com. Or if you prefer, you can bring your tithe and offering to the church office Monday through Thursday during business hours. If you are joining us in person, you can drop off your tithes and offerings in the offering containers located at each of the sanctuary exits. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. Now let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for bringing us together in this place. We ask that you take these tithes and offerings that we bring to you this morning and that you would use them to bless those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to church this morning. I know things have been a little bit different today. Wow. It was, it was really strange for me to be down there and then to be up there as we were leading worship. But man, we, it's amazing the things that we get caught up in that we feel like have to be this way or have to be that way. When really the only thing that we need is to be in the presence of God. So what an amazing, incredible, powerful time of worship that we've had, even though it was different. I know that today is also a little bit different because there is a championship football game that I am legally bound not to say the name of on a live stream while we're online right now that I cannot say the name of and it's going to drive me crazy. But there's a pretty big football game going on this evening. I see a lot of you wearing your jerseys today. Thank you so much for participating in this jersey Sunday. I've chosen to wear a referee jersey because I am impartial to either side. <laughs> I know some of you find that hard to believe. I see some of your tweets and your Facebook posts about referees on game days, and I know you think that they take sides, but I promise you, I have no dog in this race today. I'm just excited to be here and have the opportunity to share with you on this special day. Before we do that, though, we've already done so many things differently. We're going to continue to do things a little bit differently. If you are here with us in person or online at home, 
I want to encourage you right now to take your phone out and get ready to text in church. Now, this is just like a one-time, just, just a few-minute offer, okay? I'm not telling you to text your neighbor or your friends or your— we have a very specific thing that we want you to text right now. I, I want you to get your phones out. You have the opportunity, whether you're here live and in person or online joining us, you have the opportunity this morning— Live only, if you're watching the rebroadcast, I'm sorry you missed out. You should have been here with us live. But if you're watching live right now, online or in person, you can take your phone out and you can text the word SUPER to the number that's on the screen, 65047. You can text the number, you can text the word SUPER to the number 65047. And then it'll walk you through some details. You will be entered in to a contest to win a $100 Visa gift card. How many of you like free money? Man, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm, if you see me pull my phone out up here from the pulpit, it's because I'm texting the word super to 65047. I don't know if I can win or not, but I'm going to try. You're going to text that number, text super to that number to be entered in. If you win if you're here live today and you get that text message, I'm sure we'll hear you say an extra loud hallelujah. <laughs> and then you can find Pastor George after the service is over and he will make sure that you get your gift. If you are online, whether that's local, whether you're watching from Alaska, Antarctica, wherever you might be, if you win, if you will contact the church by phone we will make sure that we find a way to get you your gift amen amen so that's fun that's exciting and now we're going to get to the most fun most exciting part of the day which is we're going to dig in this morning to the word of god amen amen, amen. we've been talking a lot about destiny for the last few weeks around here. We've been talking about what, it, what that means, how we can move forward towards our God-given destiny, his plans, his purposes for our life. Pastor's been sharing, and some of the things that we've talked about, we're deciding to obey God no matter what, no matter what God asks us to do, fully committing, surrendering, deciding to obey him no matter what. Then we said we were gonna determine to lead and not follow. Then we said we were going to dare to dream. We were not going to let the enemy steal the dreams that God has for each of our lives. And today, as we continue this series, I want to talk to you about disciplining ourselves to godliness. We want to talk about what that means to discipline ourselves to godliness. We're going to look at three different things that we all need in our lives. Me, you, everybody in here, three different things that we need in our lives in order to do that. When we talk about this football game tonight that's going to happen, neither one of these teams that are playing tonight ended up there on accident. It didn't just happen that they both got to this championship game. The, each of these teams have some common disciplines that have led to this day, to this moment, for each of them. Today we're going to talk about some of those common disciplines that those teams have and how we can apply those same things to our own lives. As we look in the book of Matthew, we can see each of these three keys being modeled by Jesus' disciples. So this morning I, I would like to ask you to take your Bibles out, open them to Matthew chapter 4. If you don't have your Bibles, you can follow along with us on the screen this morning. As we begin talking this morning, about commitment. Matthew 4, verses 18 through 22, says this. As he, speaking of Jesus, was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea. Since they were fishermen, follow me, he told them and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, it says, they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. 
immediately they left the boat and their father and they followed him. Jesus, in this portion of the scripture, had begun to call his disciples to him. He began to invite invite his disciples to come and follow him. And this scripture says that immediately they left what they were doing, they dropped what they were doing, and they began to follow him. They didn't have time to put this in order, put that in order, let me, let me sell this, let me get rid of this, let me do this, let me do that. I just want to do this one last thing, Lord, before I follow you. No, it says he called them and immediately they followed. Their priorities shifted immediately. Whatever was the most important thing in their lives before their encounter with Jesus was no longer the most important thing anymore. See, when they met Jesus, everything changed. Everything changed. All of their priorities, all of their expectations, all of their desires, everything changed. They immediately dropped everything that they were doing. Everything else took a back seat to the plans, the purposes, and the, the things that Jesus had called them to. They dropped what they were doing, and they followed him. And as we read throughout the Gospels, we can see that literally the disciples followed Jesus wherever he went. All the way up until the crucifixion, if you read a story about Jesus, guess who was right there? The disciples. Always. They were never far. They were never far from Jesus. They were fully committed to him. I want you to know something this morning. There, there was no free trial membership to the Disciples Club. They didn't have a free trial subscription to decide, hey, I, I think I, I, I might want to be a disciple. Let me try this for a week. Let me try this for a month. How many of you have ever done one of those free trial subscriptions to anything. I mean, you can do that for, for TV and movie subscriptions for a month. You can do a, a week at the gym. You can do clothing. So there's subscription boxes for everything now. Free trials for everything now. We love free trials. I, I do. I love it. I, I, I like going to Sam's Club. You can have lunch at Sam's Club <laughs> with some free trials of whatever food they have for I don't even care what it is. I'll eat it. We love free trial memberships. You can try out anything. Apps and software and, and, and gyms and all sorts of different things. And we love it while it's free. Right? But maybe this only happens at my house but is there anybody else out there that has, has ever started a free trial subscription to something and then you forgot to cancel? Whew. I mean, I don't want to blame anybody for this at my house. <clears throat> Jacqueline. <clears throat> but man, we love free. We love it when it's free, right? But when it costs something, we're, whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on. I was good when this was free, but... $9.99 for unlimited movies? I don't, that's my, that's too much. I don't know. $10 a month to go to the gym and hurt myself on a weekly basis? <laughs> mm, I don't know about that. We love, we love it when it's free, but when it begins to cost us something, we take a step back. And we can't do that with our faith. We can't do that when we decide to follow Jesus. We can't do that when we decide to surrender our lives to him. There is no free trial membership to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's a lifelong commitment that we are making to serve and follow the one who has given it all for us. You cannot try God. He invites us to drop what we are doing, to leave the things of the past behind us and to begin to follow him, to make a commitment to serve him. Just like the disciples had to leave some things behind. There may be some things in our past. There may be some things that, that we used to do that we say, you know what, I no longer can hold on to this. I no longer can do this thing or that thing. I no longer, this can no longer be that important to me. I need to surrender some things 
let some things go in order to fully commit myself to following the Lord. Listen, I'm gonna tell you straight up this morning. No hidden fees, no fine print. I'm gonna be boldly honest with you this morning. It's gonna cost you some things to follow Jesus. Nothing, nothing ever worth really having has ever not cost anything. Any real valuable thing that we can commit to comes at a cost. But I promise you this, the things that we, we might feel like we are giving up in order to serve him do not even compare to the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. The things that he has done for us. These teams that are playing today are fully committed to what they're doing. They are fully committed to achieving this prize. They are fully committed to, to doing everything that they can, whatever it takes to win this championship. And we must discipline ourselves to be fully committed to do whatever it is that the Lord is asking us to do in order to follow him. Even if that means leaving some things behind, we choose to obey God, remember? No matter what. We have to keep our eyes on the prize which is him and remember that our heavenly reward is worth far more and far outweighs any earthly cost that we might feel like we're walking through. Great teams are committed and great teams are also led by a great coach. Matthew 5, 1 through 2 says this. When he, again speaking of Jesus, saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after that he sat down. His disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them, saying, dot, dot, dot. I have to stop there because I can't read this entire text. I don't have time to read this entire passage of Scripture. It's so incredible. But all the way from Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 3, all the way through Matthew chapter 7, verse 27, is all the words of Jesus teaching his disciples. The crowds had gathered to hear him teach this famous sermon that he was getting ready to deliver, and his disciples were again right there close by him. They went to the top of the mountain with him. They had front row seats to listen to the words of their coach to hear what he was saying. Every word, again, that was written here between Matthew 5, 3 and Matthew 7, 27 is the words of Jesus coaching his followers. Listen, I want to encourage you. This week, find some time at home, wherever you can. Take time to read through this section of Scripture for yourself. He talks about godly characteristics. He talks about anger. He talks about adultery, generosity, revenge, prayer, fasting, love, money, the golden rule, on and on and on and on, Jesus teaches in this section of Scripture. He was coaching them and guiding them, leading them to know what the life of a disciple should look like. He was coaching them to win. He wanted them to reach the destiny that God had planned and prepared for them, and he was giving them the directions on how to get there. I did some research getting ready for, for this message, and I, I found out that the average salary for a head coach in the NFL this year is reportedly between six and seven million dollars a year. NFL coach, according to this year, the closest stats, six to seven million dollars a year. Each team is guaranteed to play 16 games. You play 20 games if you make it to the championship. If we split the difference and assume you make it all the way to the end, we can divide 6.5 million by 20 games and get $325,000 a game that they're paying this coach to coach football. How many of y'all are impressed with my math skills this morning? <laughs> I won't tell you how long it took me to arrive at these numbers. I also will not tell you that they are 100% accurate. I could have made a mistake. But still, $325,000 a game. Listen to this. I saw another study. In 2013, they did a study of how many minutes was actually being played in a football game. A football game, they say, from 2013 lasts three hours and 20 minutes. Okay? Out of that three hours and 20 minutes, guess how much time the ball was actually live and in play. That means the ball was snapped, the ball was in motion, and then it stops. How much time do you think in a football game? A three-hour and 20-minute football game. 
This study was done in 2013. 45 minutes, 30 minutes. How about 11 minutes? Then we got all the commercials. We got halftime reports. We have injury timeouts, regular timeouts, commercial timeouts. 11 minutes. Check this out. That coach is making per game $29,545 and some change for every minute that that ball is live and in play. (sighs) Are you kidding me? I know that there's a lot more that goes into game preparation. I I get it. But when you really break it down to the the basics of this, he's getting paid almost $30,000 a minute that the ball is in play. They place a very high value on having the right coach. We've got to place a high value in our lives to make sure that we have the right person coaching us. There's so many people out in the world today trying to coach us. There's so many people trying to tell us what we should or shouldn't do. There's so many people trying to tell you how to do this and how to do that, and we rely so much on people that don't have the winning formula. They might think they do. They don't really know. We have people that are coaching us to succeed on this earth that have no idea how to make us succeed in eternity. I don't want the coach that's going to coach me to succeed from now to when I'm long gone from this earth and celebrating the victory that he's won in heaven. That's the coach that I want. Quit listening, please, please, please. And I tell myself this too. I've got to quit listening to coaches with losing records and listen to the coach that's won it all. Just like the disciples, listen, we have a front row seat to the teachings of Jesus through the Bible. Stop letting the world tell you what your values should be, what should be important to you. Start asking God through his word. Get in the word of God. Let him coach you. Let him show you those winning plays that are the ones that are going to keep you on track and moving towards your God-given destiny and purpose. If he gave it to you, then he knows how to get you to it. You know what I'm saying? If he gave it to you, he knows exactly how to get you there. So let's listen to what the word of God would say to us. Trust the word of God to coach us through our lives, and he will lead us into godliness, righteousness, and everything that he has for us. Great teams are committed. They have great coaches. And lastly, they know the importance of practice. Matthew 7, 13 through 21 says this. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life and few find it. Narrow is the gate and the path that leads to life. I want to give you another statistic this morning. I I did a lot of math for this, sir. I hope you appreciate it. (laughs) According to a study done by the NCAA, a high school football player has a 0.09 chance of making it into the NFL. 0.09. That means nine out of 10,000 high school football players make it to the NFL. If you play college sports, those odds go up just a little bit more. 1.6% chance of you being a, a collegiate athlete and making it into the NFL. Narrow is the path to the NFL. Okay, but how do they get from high school into the NFL? Let's keep reading. In verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit. Neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. 
Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So you'll recognize them by their fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So how do those young high school kids make it all the way from high school all the way into the NFL? They don't just talk. See, they're not like these false prophets that says that they are coming to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravaging wolves. We all know those people that talk a pretty big game, right? But how many of you know, oftentimes, we've heard people talk a big game, and then when it comes time to show the results, they just don't got it. And there's no hiding that. You cannot mask that. You cannot fake that. These young people that make it all the way from, from high school sports all the way into to professional sports, they didn't talk their way there. The fruit of their lives is what got them there. And they began to produce that fruit as they practiced. The more they practiced, the more uh, uh, effort they gave, the more that they pursued their calling, the more that they were committed, the more that they submitted themselves to the right coaching, they grew and they were developed and they began to produce more and more fruit and they ended up in the professional football league. Because of the evidence of what they were able to do, the things that they were producing in their lives. The evidence of our lives should show the fruit of a life spent in pursuit of Jesus. Should show a life of practicing, of, of, of not just listening to the coaches, but actually doing what they say. It's not enough to just hear what a coach is saying. That doesn't change anything. I know that. I, I, I played high school football, and I use the word played loosely. Okay? because I heard what the coaches were saying, but for one reason or another, I was unable to, to apply what they were saying to my life and allow it to produce that fruit in my life. But we have, again, the greatest coach that there ever was, ever will be. And he can speak to us daily as we get into his word. And then as he speaks to us, he invites us he invites us to go out and put into practice everything that he's taught them, taught us. Again, we look at the life of the disciples. Jesus had poured into them and poured into them and poured into them. He spoke to them and taught them and showed them different things, showed them miracles and, and, and began to teach them how to pray and teach them how to live and teach them how to walk out their faith. And then in Matthew chapter 10, he sent them out. He called them, he equipped them, and then he sent them. He sent them out to go and do what he had been teaching them and showing them. He had, call, he had coached them, and now he was calling them to execute the plan in order for us to truly discipline ourselves to godliness. We must be willing to put into practice everything that God has instructed us to do. Good coaching produces nothing unless we're willing to put it to action. But if we put God's word to work in our lives, we put it to practice, it will lead us to God's plans, his purpose, his destiny for each of us. If we will discipline ourselves to godliness. God is looking for people who will choose to live this way. People who are fully committed to serving God wholeheartedly, no matter what. Those who are willing to allow him to coach them. People who will take his direction and put it to action. Those are the kind of people that he can take from wherever they're at right here and right now and lead them to his plans, his purposes, his destiny for their lives. We've got to determine, decide to obey God no matter what. We've got to determine to lead and not follow. We've got to dare to dream. And we've got to discipline ourselves to godliness. I want to ask us if we'll just bow our heads and, and close our eyes, whether you're here live or, or online with us, I just want to ask you a few questions. I don't want you to raise your hand or anything like that. I just want you to, to think about what I'm asking you, to be honest with yourself, be honest with God. 
and ask yourself these questions. Do you really want God's best for your life? Do you really want everything that God has planned and purpose for you? Do you really want to do everything, whatever it takes in order to see that happen? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to see that happen in your life? Maybe you're here today and you know that you've kind of been trying this whole God thing out like we talked about earlier. You, you say, I've tried God, but it just hasn't worked for me. But I, you know that today that the Lord is, is calling on you and the Lord is inviting you to fully surrender, to fully commit to serving him. Maybe you're here and you've let other voices speak into your life. You've allowed other people, other things to coach you. And you haven't allowed God to be your coach. Today is the day to give God full control. Maybe you're here today and you know that God has given you some very, very clear instruction, but you've been hesitant to put it into practice. You know what you need to do, but maybe you just haven't done it yet. If any of what I'm describing to you today sounds familiar, then I want to close our service today with prayer. I want to pray with you this morning. So Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the worship that we had earlier, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, Lord, and all that you are going to continue to do in us, with us, and through us, Lord. We want to commit Lord God, to discipline ourselves to godliness. Lord, we, we want to commit to being more like you, Lord. So Lord, we choose right here, right now, this day, Lord, to be fully committed to you, Lord God. We choose to be fully committed to you, Lord, to be fully surrendered to you. Lord, we choose right here, right now, Lord, to let you speak into our lives or let you coach us through your word, oh God, as we spend time with you in prayer, Lord, would you coach us, would you lead us, would you guide us in all things and through all things, Lord God. Lord, and we make a commitment today, Lord, a commitment to serve you, Lord, to live for you, to put to practice the things that you have shown us, oh God, the things that you have taught us, Lord, the things that, that, that we are, are, are learning from you on a daily basis, Lord, we make a commitment to apply those things to our lives, oh God. Lord, I shake off any, any, any condemnation from the enemy, oh God. I shake off any lies from the enemy that say we can't or it's too late, oh God. It is never too late, oh God. Lord, for those, for that person that's here today, oh God, that hears it's, it's too late for me, that's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the devil. It is not too late. Today is the day. Today is the day. Lord, we choose today to be the day that we fully surrender, fully submit to you, Lord God. We love you. We give you thanks. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are the, uh, are the cameras off? We're so glad that you joined us for this great teaching today. It's our hope that the Lord would use this message to encourage you and to equip you to move forward into everything that he has prepared for you. If you have a prayer request, we would love the opportunity to pray for you. So stop by gsccconnect.com and click on the link labeled Contact Us to let us know how we can be in prayer for you. While you're there, be sure to check out our About page to learn more about the mission and vision of GSCC. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay connected with everything going on at GSEC. Be blessed and have a great week, and we'll see you next time.